Corporate Consolidated Returns, Tax Basics Problem 2. The stock of Root Corporation, a U.S. company, is publicly traded with no single shareholder owning more than 5% of its outstanding stock. Root owns 95% of the outstanding stock of Potato Inc., also a U.S. company. Potato owns 100% of the outstanding stock of Yam Corporation, a Canadian company. Root and Yam each owns 50% of the outstanding stock of Ginger Inc., a U.S. company. Root and Potato each owns 50% of the outstanding stock of Turmeric Corporation, a U.S. company. Which of these corporations form an affiliated group eligible to file a consolidated tax return? So we've got a corporate consolidated return. I have another problem on this where I introduced the topic. Please make sure you watch the first problem. Really important that we go through this. The question is asking which of these corporations form an affiliated group. And we're given various corporations. They're all C corporations because we're just told corporation or Inc. Don't doesn't say anything about S corporations. Now, some of them say U.S., some of them say Canadian. So that's going to be important as well. Because as you learned in the previous problem video, to have an affiliated group, you basically have to have a parent, and remember, C corporations we denote with um, rectangles, parent to subsidiary relationship where the ownership is greater than or equal to 80% direct or indirect ownership, direct or indirect ownership, and remember, you have to have U.S., U.S. C corporations to get this. And the idea is that if you have that, the parent and subsidiary relationship, you can basically file one consolidated return for purposes of filing with the IRS. Now, I also told you in the, in the previous problem, in a problem like this, it seems very challenging because you've got a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. The first thing you want to do is you want to write down the party names, all the possibilities. And you want to just start off by looking at it. Okay, there's two things we do when we, when we start this problem. Well, three things. First thing is remember the rules. We just went through that, right? You're going to have an affiliated group if you've got a parent-subsidiary relationship, 80% or more indirect or direct control, and it has to be a USC corporation, all the entities that you're considering. Okay, so that's the first step. That's step one. Step two is just write down all the parties. Write down all the parties in the problem because it's asking which of these corporations and we have a whole list of corporations. Make it more manageable. Start by making it manageable. So the first corporation is Root Corporation. And I'm also going to, for this one, put down next to it whether it's a U.S. or non-U.S. It doesn't matter whether it's you know Canada, Ireland, uh, Brazil, it's a non-U.S. And remember, the rule is it has to be a U.S. Cor C corporation. Because remember, all these corporations in this problem are going to be C corporations because nothing says they're S. So that by default, we assume a corporation in the problem is a C corporation unless it says S corporation, unless it says made an S election or it's an S corporation. So we've got root corporation, and root corporation is a U.S. corporation. Okay, that's the first one. And we're also told that the next one is Potato Inc., so we've got Potato Inc. And Potato Inc. is also a U.S. corporation. Next one is we've got Yam Corporation. So Yam Corporation is not a U.S. corporation. So I'll put not a U.S. corporation. Next one after that is going to be Ginger Inc. Ginger Inc. is a U.S. corporation. So Ginger Inc., is a U.S. corporation. And finally, the last one is going to be Turmeric Corporation, which is a U.S. corporation. A U.S. corporation. So we have all five of those down. And the best thing to do here is just to go through. So we know it can't be Yam Corporation because it's not a U.S. corporation. So that one right there, not going to work. Right? It's not going to work. So we can eliminate that. Okay, we can eliminate that one right there alone. Okay, we can eliminate that entity just by itself. So now what we do the third step, and this is probably the most difficult of the steps, but I think it's most interesting, is to draw out the corporate structure now that you know all this stuff. Okay, now that you know all this stuff. So we start by just, I always start the way the problem is written because that's almost always how you start with the higher level, but it could be written out of order. But this one, I've, we've read through it before, and it starts at the top anyways. But you want to start by starting at the top because you have parent subsidiary. I could tell you the lowest level and go the opposite. I don't really do that with my students if you're taking my class, but some professors do. So just be careful. 
So I'm telling you right now that Root starts off and then there's going to be ownership below. So the stock of Root Corporation, a U.S. company, okay, has no single shareholder owning more than 5%. The reason why I tell you that is because usually I start off with that one so you know that there's no corporation above that could be consolidated with Root. The idea is that there's not going to be 80% or more apparent corporation above Root Corporation. So we start with Root and do a little square. I'm just going to use the first name of the companies in this one. So we've got Root Corporation, okay? So Root owns 95% of potato, of potato. So remember, we're looking for 80% or more direct or indirect. And I'll, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go through later and do that analysis, but just keep that in mind. So Root owns 95% of potato, also a U.S. company. And again, on the left, I, I'm sorry, on the right side, I have whether they're U.S. or not U.S. and I already eliminated basically the ones that are not U.S. Potato owns 100% of the stock of Yam. So Potato owns 100% of Yam Corporation. Okay, so far it doesn't look too, too bad. Canadian company. That's why we had to eliminate it because it was Canadian. Root and Yam each owns 50% of the stock of Ginger. Okay, so now let's do this on the right side. Over here, I'm sorry, left side, my apologies. Uh, Root owns 50%. Actually, let me make that a little bit longer. Got to go a little bit further down. Need a little bit more room. So that's a 50% ownership by root. And that's going to be ginger and 50% owned by yam. Okay. And then we're told that root and potato each owns 50% of the outstanding stock of Turmeric Corporation, which is a U.S. So then we're going to go on the right side, and I'm going to do something similar, but not as low down. So 50% and 50% of Turmeric. Okay. So that's our corporate structure. We've got all of them listed down there. All right, so now the first thing I do is anytime you see 80% or more direct, which is going to be our percentages on our lines, that is automatically going to be a parent-subsidiary relationship. So we have root to potato. So right there, ding, 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 right there alone. Well, we checked their U.S. They're both U.S., right? So yes, they're still here. They're still eligible. So those ones alone are going to be affiliated group, which is corporations can form an affiliated group eligible to file consolidated those two right there alone, just by, just by the direct ownership alone. Also we have potato to yam, but remember yam was eliminated because it's not a U.S. corporation. Oh, that looked so promising, but unfortunately we can't do it. Okay. So now what do we have left? We've got 50%, 50% potato, 50% to turmeric, and then we've got the other side as well. Okay, we've got the other side as well. So the way we do this now is, let's start on the left side. So this is looking promising because yam is owned 100% by potato and potato is owned 95% by root. Here's the problem, is that yes, this would ultimately be indirect ownership, but for the fact that because yam is not a US corporation, we basically have to completely take that out of the picture. So what I'm saying is that this disappears. So that arm, you can't use that because Yam was not a U.S. corporation. It basically completely removes it like it doesn't even exist. Just ends right there. Just ends. So even though Ginger's owned 50% by this, this blank right here, right, that keeps scribbling it out, right, we, just, we can only use the 50% over there. So direct ownership is 50%. Indirect is going to be zero. Do we have 80% or more? No. Direct plus indirect? No. So unfortunately, ginger is going to be eliminated as well. So the only other possibility, right, because we know root corporation is, the, is one of the answers. We know potato. Remember, with these questions, you're, you have to have at least two. It's either you're not going to have one. It's going to be zero or it's going to be two or more. Could be three. You can have three. That's possible. Right now, it's going to be either two or three. Okay, based on our answers. But you can't have one. It's either going to be zero 
then to two, then to three, then to four, you know, so on. So what about turmeric? So we have 50% and 50%. So that alone is direct ownership and that's not enough. But the indirect is, okay, well, potatoes own 95% by root and that was one. So the question is, can we use the indirect ownership through the 95%? And the answer is yes. Because the idea is that if you do 50% times 95%, that equals 47.5%. So if, even if you were looking at root or potato, either one, um, I actually would say the best way to look at this is through potato because potato has the, the closer way down, right? You want to do the ones closer th down the line. But you could do either one. You could do it from either direction. It doesn't matter because it's going to be part of the same group. Whether you do root or potato, it's going to equal the same amount. If we use potato, potato has 50%. So if we use potato, so potato to turmeric. Sorry, I got a little excited there. Potato to turmeric. Direct ownership, of course, is this number right here. It's 50%. Indirect is going to be the fact that root owns 50%. So basically, you go this direction. You go that direction. So you do 50% times 95%. That's 47.5%. You add those two together, you get 97.5%. So right there, boom, boom, boom. Yes, that right there is going to be, you are able to do part of a consolidated group with the other two with root and potato. Now, if you're going the other direction, if you did root, it'd also be 50%. It would be this number, and you would go this direction. So it'd be 50% that potato owns times 95%, and then that'd be 47.5, it'd be 97.5%. So the ultimate answer here is Root Corporation, Potato Inc., Tumor Corporation are all eligible to file consolidated returns. So we could file one return. If they filed one return, you would do the highest level. You would go up to the highest level. So it would be Root's return. Root would be the parent ultimately in this situation. And that's how you would do this. So keep this in mind with the other problem. Very important, very useful, these affiliated groups. Um, I hope you enjoyed that topic. It's really interesting, you know, if you like drawing things out and kind of eliminating, it's a little bit more conceptual, not the normal um, tax rules where you're doing calculations using tax rates. Kind of just shows you how the tax law is and, and how things work.